Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونتوب إليه ونعوذ به من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له قيوم السماوات والأراضين وأشهد أن محمدا صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم عبد الله ورسوله بلغ العلا بكماله كشف الدجا بجماله عظمت جميع خصاله صل عليه وآله Brothers and sisters in Islam we thank the almighty Allah for giving us another opportunity to be here today we thank him for his mercies that he's bestowed upon us. We bear witness that there is no deity worthy of worship except the Almighty Allah. We also bear witness that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger. Whosoever the Almighty Allah guides is really guided. And anybody who goes astray has nobody to blame but themselves. Today is a Friday which corresponds with the 16th day of Rabiul Awal, 1443 years after the Hijrah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam, which also corresponds with today being the 22nd day of, Feb of, of, of October 2021. Alhamdulillah, as Muslims, we have one key statement that we all make across the world, irrespective of wherever we are. And that key word is Ashadu Allah ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Today I want us to look at the second part of this statement, which is Wa Ashadu Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of the Almighty Allah. You know, most often than not, some of us pay lip service to this statement. That yes, we believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But then, what does it really entail when you say, I love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Is it just lip service? We say, I love the Prophet and that is enough. Or what is it? The scholars of Tawheed are telling us that when you say, Ashhadu anna Muhammad rasulullah, you must implement four things 
before your love for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam becomes established. Without one of these four things, then your love for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is only lip service. It's not in reality. It's not in action. For all us, we know that in the Quran, when the Almighty Allah says "Illa ladina amanu," He says "Wa amilu salihat." Those who believe and then they do good things. So Islam is not only about what you say in your mouth or what you keep in your heart. Your body should also manifest what you believe in your heart. That is why the scholars of Tawheed tell us that Al Iman ma waqara fil qalbi wa sadaqahu al qawl wal amal. Iman is what is in your heart and then manifest or reflected through your actions. So if you say, if someone says, why don't you pray salah or why don't you fast? And you say, ah, Iman is in the heart. That is a very wrong statement. Islam does not believe in that. It's like your student or your child goes to school and then he's given an exam and then he tells the teacher that my knowledge is in my head. No need for me to put it on paper for you to know whether I know or not. Obviously, it doesn't make sense. So in the same way, in Islam, Iman is in the heart, but then it manifests in our actions and in actions. Same way when we say we believe in the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Yes, it's in our heart, but then there are some actions that must reflect that for it to be a positive love for the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first one they tell us is ta'atuhu fi ma'amara. That we should be obedient to all the rulings that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with. The orders of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the rules, the guidelines that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with, how do we relate with them? Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, a companion of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day was going to enter the masjid. At the same time, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was about to begin a class. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud's right leg had entered the masjid and his left leg was outside the masjid. And the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, sit down guys, sit down guys, I have a class for you, sit down. Abdullah Mas'ud sat down like that. The right leg was in the masjid, the left leg was outside the masjid, and the Prophet said, sit down, he sat down. After some time, the Prophet looked at the door of the masjid and he saw him, he said, ah, Abdullah, why are you sitting there like that? There are spaces in the masjid, come in. He said, Ya Rasulullah, when my right leg entered the masjid, my left leg was outside and I heard you say, sit down, sit down, sit down. I don't want to move an inch and the angel of death will take my life. And when Allah asked me, Abdullah, my prophet said, sit down. Why did you walk? I don't have any answer to give the almighty Allah. So long as you, Muhammad, you say, sit down, I'm sitting down. Is that how we deal with the commandments of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Or we are always interested in our own mental gymnastics. You know, sometimes you meet a Muslim and then he thinks he's smarter than Allah. He thinks he's smarter than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh no, we are in the 21st century, global village. We are now in advancement in the atomic and the nuclear age. How can you be thinking about things that happened in the 7th century? No, this doesn't make sense because, you know, maybe he's a psychologist or maybe he's a philosopher. He thinks that mm, 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 mm. that's how we deal. So you find a Muslim, he is a Muslim by name, but in practice he's not a Muslim because of the way he deals with the actions and the attributes of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I say, wallahi, the problem that the Muslims are facing, not only in America, but across the world, is because we don't take the orders of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very, very important. We are new Muslims. We are modern Muslims. We are liberal Muslims. Uh, we pick and choose. You know, when you go to the supermarket to buy something, you can't buy everything in there. Or do you buy everything in there? No. You pick and choose. Even when you go to buy nuts, you choose which one you want to buy. You want to buy toothpaste? No, this is Colgate. This, no, I choose this one. That's how sometimes we deal with the orders of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No, this is okay with me. No, this is not okay with me. This is my madhab. You know, my sheikh says so. And even in our village, this is how we do things. Your sheikh doesn't matter when it comes to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your village issues do not matter when it comes to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the non-Muslims, before he became a Muslim, I forgot his name. 
when he was sent to 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 have a negotiation with the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he came back to the quraysh and then he was telling them that guys forget we can't defeat muhammad we can't why he said i have visited i have visited kings in their palaces i have gone to rome and i have gone to persia and i have seen the way these kings live but then the way the companions of muhammad treat him wallahi it is beyond what these kings have in their palaces even if muhammad was supposed to spit one of the companions who clutch the spit and then wipe it over his face but look at us come into our homes and see how well do we manifest the rules of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in our homes how do we treat our wives how do we treat our children how do we treat our neighbors how do we treat our co-workers how do we treat anybody who comes into contact with us do we reflect the teachings of the muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam any time they say muhammad we say sallallahu alaihi wasallam but our life is bereft of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because we don't follow his teachings wallahi if we want to be strong people let's go back to the teachings of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam ta'atuhu fi ma amara wallahi let's be obedient to the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam because let's tell you one thing prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the only person you close your eyes and hold his cloth and then you go to jannah that's it you see all the other sheikhs we are all following the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam every other human being on the surface of the earth a muslim sheikh maulana allama is following is just picking from the crumbs of the table of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so if your allegiance and your love to that imam is more than what you have for the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam then be very careful because some of us when we are told a hadith of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we want to we want to wait and, and hear what does my sheikh say when they say qala allah qala rasul yes qala allah qala rasul but qala fulan qala maulana yes i have an imam in my village he's also very good i want to hear what he has to say and the moment what the imam says contradicts what the prophet says he goes with what the imam says fitna 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 wallahi fitna the second rule that we must implement if you say we love the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is tasdiquhu fi ma akhbara let's believe in the stories he told the message he brought let's believe in in it it's very important it's as if you know the scholars 1000 years ago it's as if they knew or they were living with us we now because sometimes some people they look at something and say hey, this doesn't make sense Oh this is it doesn't make sense. We this is ah, no 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 it doesn't make sense. It, it psychologically and philosophically even if you look at the empirical statistics of science you know it goes no 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 this doesn't make sense. When the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam went for Isra wal Miraj when he went upstairs for salah when he went to meet Allah for salah and then he came back and then he told the kuffar of Mecca that I have gone up to meet Allah and I've taken salah and I'm back. He has not yet met Abu Bakr to tell Abu Bakr. And then Abu Jahl met Abu Bakr. And he said Abu Bakr he said yes. Did you meet your friend? He said no since last night when we parted ways I've not seen him. He said oh so you've not seen him today. He said no he has brought something new. Your friend Muhammad every day he brings something new. And I I don't think this new one you've heard it. He said no what, what is it? He said your friend said last night he left Mecca here. he went to jerusalem from there he went up to go and meet your god and then he came back all within one night what do you think about that and then abu bakr asked him abu jahl are you sure it is muhammad who told you that he said yes he told me that he said if it is muhammad who told you that it is true if it is muhammad who told you that last night he went to jerusalem from jerusalem he went up to meet allah and then he came back all within one night that it is true abu jahli looked at him and he said abu bakar we thought muhammad was crazy but you are mad the story is it is not the prophet who told abu bakar that he had gone to heaven it was abu jahl who told abu bakar that the prophet had gone to heaven 
But then Abu Bakr believed that so long as it is the Prophet who said so, that it is true. So long as it is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who says it, that it is true because he is a sadiq al amin That is why those people ruled the world. They didn't have any technological power. They didn't have any modern military minds. No nuclear weapons, no atomic, no biological weapons. But then their biological weapons were their iman. And they ruled the world with justice. And the non-Muslims themselves know it that the world has never endured justice, had never felt and enjoyed justice like it did under the rule of Muslims. And as Muslims of today, if we want to return back to that power, to that importance, to that significance, then we must go back and pick lessons from the lives of these people. Wallah, you meet some Muslims and then they say, oh, you see this thing? Me, I don't believe in it. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. If each and every one of us is going to measure Islam using our senses and our minds, then Islam is not going to remain because all of us have different ideologies and mentalities. أقول ما تسمعون واستغفروا الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين ولا عقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله ما بعد. Brothers, can you please move forward so that we fill up the rules? You know, the first rule is more rewardable than the next rule, than the next rule, than the next rule. So please, let's fill up the rules. Let's come forward. Okay, please, so that those who come late will not have to know. Go through as we've through, but they can also join at the back. We're speaking about manifesting the love of the Prophet Muhammad in our lives. And then the love of the Prophet Muhammad is just not lip service, but it's action, it's act. And then we spoke about obedience to the Prophet Muhammad and then believing in what he had brought. The next one is Ijtina Bumana Ha'anu. Let's be mindful of the prohibitions that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made. The warnings when he says, no, don't do this. Wallahi, let's be careful. فَلْيَحْذَرِ الَّذِينَ يُخَالِفُونَ عَنْ أَمْرِ أَنْ تُصِيبَهُمْ فِتْنَةً أَوْ يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا Wallahi, let's be very careful. The problem that the Muslim Ummah is facing today is that when the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, don't do it, we do it. Where he says, do, we don't do. Come into our lives. Wallahi. And see how we relate with each other. Is it how the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us? How? How do you relate with each other? Come and see. Come, come, come to our marriage ceremonies. How we organize our marriages. From... From, from whatever to whatever, how do we do it? Why do you think that young men are finding it difficult to get married now? Why? Why do you think so? You have about four or five boys in your home, 25, 26, 27 year old guys, 30 year old boys in your home, they can't get married. And the girls are also there, they can't get married. We have many bachelors, you have many spinsters, but we can't marry. Why? Because we've put in place injunctions in marriage that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't teach us. We've put in place secondary issues that have no basis in Islam, but because of our pride and our egos, we put in place all those things. And our daughters who remain in their homes, they are 30, 35, 40, they are not yet married. The guys are there, 30, 35, they are not yet married, but then they are having affairs and then having children outside marriage. You have it in your homes. This is the reality. We have it in our homes. 
We have 20-year-old girls, 24-year-old girls in our homes. They are not married, but they have two kids. Why? She has met a young man who is very well versed in the dean, very, very appropriate young man, but then you've put in place injections and introductions into the system. The young man cannot overcome it. And then he loves her, she loves him. So what happens? They meet after Isha, 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, and then they break up. They are married around 12 a.m. to continue tomorrow. What will happen? You see the problem? Until we take out our egos out of it, until we take out our cultures out of it, until we return back to what the Prophet Muhammad taught us in our marital lives, in our social life, in whatever lives that we are pursuing, Wallah, you will not have the peace of mind that we say we crave for. We won't have it. Because every father here in the masjid, when his daughter goes out, he's not, he's not okay. Are you okay? When your daughter doesn't come back home around 8 p.m., are you satisfied? No, you are scared. If you have the ghira, if you have the jealousy of the deen in your heart, when your daughter is in your home, she's 20, 21, 22, you are not satisfied. You know that very well. But then why is it that if a young man comes in to marry her, you look at him and then you ask her younger brother, go and look outside, which car did they come with? Oh, they came with a $10,000 car. You can't marry my daughter. You can't, you, know, you can't take care of her. So someone comes with a $60,000 car because, and he's a drug dealer. You give him your daughter because of your prestige. You want your daughter to live in a $3 million house, to ride a $100,000 car. So if a young man who comes, who has a halal job, who is well-doing in the religion, he comes to the masjid all the time, you won't give, him, you don't give your daughter to him because, no, he drives a $2,000 car or a $5,000 car. But when someone who is of fahsha and munkar, who is a drug dealer, can bring her a $100,000 car and put her in a $3 million machine, you will give him to her. And your daughter will always come home with sunglasses because he beats her every day. Because you've made him understand that you are interested in his money. That is why you gave your daughter to him. Or you gave your daughter to him, yes. So this is only about marriage, and you know about other issues that I don't know of. That you are sitting on them, you are not following the rulings of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on that, and then you are finding challenges in your lives. So some of the problems that we have is self-inflicted. And let's go back to the drawing board and look at things very, very well again. That if we say we love the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then he was sent as a mercy for mankind, and then he was sent to us to guide us to the right path, then let's go back to the drawing board and look at our lives. What are we doing in there that is not in tandem with Islam? And you find out that the pressure that we have on ourselves, the stress, the frustrations, the disappointment, is because we've put aside the Prophet Muhammad wasallam from our lives, and we are following our whims, our caprices, and our egos. Finally, Loving the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and this last one is the most dangerous one. Make sure that every form of worship or ibadah that you do is coming from the office of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Wallahi, any form of ibadah that you're going to do. Make sure it's coming from the office of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Make sure the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has sanctioned it. Make sure it has the signature of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on it. Make sure there is the methodology of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in it. This is a broad topic. We can talk about this point for two to three hours. But in five minutes, let me just summarize it for you. In Islam, there are two conditions for the acceptance of good deeds. If you want your good deed to be accepted, you must make sure you meet these two criteria. They work together. They are twins. One doesn't move and leave the other. The first one is al-ikhlasunillah. Make sure you are doing it for the Almighty Allah alone. Al-ikhlas. Wallahi, this is the frightest thing for me especially and for those of us who mount the pulpit to speak to you from Friday to Friday, 
you see those of us standing here wallahi it is not an envious position if i am doing this so that you people will say wow this young man is very eloquent this young man is very knowledgeable wallahi i'm going to jahannam because i'm not doing it for allah i'm doing it for you people to praise me so if you are going to do any form of ibadah so that people will praise you that it is zero if you are doing salat so that people will praise you zero if you are reading quran so people will say mm, this guy has a beautiful voice zero if you are doing sadaqa so that people will praise you zero if you are doing tahajjud so that people will praise you zero al ikhlas lillah this is the deen of allah and we must be very very explicit about it if you want allah to accept your deed do it for him and him alone al ikhlas sincerity and this is also another subject that we must talk on for about 2 hours al ikhlas lillah because if there is no ikhlas in your work my brother forget it al ikhlas is the epitome of tawhid doing for allah alone if you're doing anything that you're doing not because of allah then my brother forget it you're wasting your time when it comes to issues of al ikhlas there's no pampering there's no sweet talking because when we sweet talk you we will deceive you you're doing zikr wallahi do it for allah you're doing sadaqa do it for allah you are helping people do it for allah you are doing tahajjud do it for allah even your work that you're doing at your workplace whether you are in the security force whether you are in the food force whether you are a coordinator wallahi do it for allah not because your manager is there or not because your supervisor is there do it for allah the second thing is make sure that ibadah that you're doing you're doing it how the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us to do it don't do it the way you feel let me give you an example today is jumuah and because we have iman iman in our heart is very 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 strong instead of two rakah we do four do we have jumuah no i hope you understand jumuah salah is how many rakah two that's it if you add one or you add two to it because your iman level is high it is null and void because the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us only two rakah he didn't teach us more maghrib salah you come to the salat maghrib is three rakats but because today is friday and your iman level is high you decided let you you want to give allah bonus so you add two extra rakats to it no salat why the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said maghrib is three rakats I hope you get it. The other example is you come to the masjid and then there is nobody in the masjid or after maghrib people have finished praying salat al maghrib and then some are doing tilawa some are doing dhikr and then you come to the masjid <coughs> Allahu akbar alhamdulillah <coughs> rabbil alamin and everybody was like whoa who is this guy Oh, you did your salat, your qira are very nice, your ruku perfect, your three rakat perfect, but then you did it so that people would turn and look at you. No salat for you. Because you didn't do ikhlas in it. Or you came to the masjid and then there was nobody in the masjid. Allah Alhamdulillah. No salah. Why? Because that is not how the Prophet taught us to pray. So these two is the epitome of my khutbah to us today. That make sure you have ikhlas in your deed and make sure you do it the way the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us. And then that is what it means to love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. اللهم اعز الاسلام والمسلمين واعزل الشرك والمشركين ودمر اعداء الدين وانصر اخوان المصرفين في كل مكان اللهم من ارادنا واراد الاسلام بسين فرد كيده علي اللهم كنا فكيد سبحانك اللهم حمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستكفرك ونتوب اليك قوموا الى صلاتكم ورحمكم الله let's not forget on sunday 24th of october at our auditorium we have you know three flu shots
from 12 to 3 in the afternoon. Let's not forget about that. And there is also going to be a youth halakha on Sunday after Maghrib. Youth halakha on Sunday after Maghrib. If a brother can just help us to switch off the camera over there. Allah, 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 Allah,